For you guys, do you guys like dinosaurs? Well, I do. Well, you came to the right place. And we have some eggs, too. And just look at all those dinosaurs in the back. We have T Rexes. Whoa, we have a couple of them. Look at the big pterodactyl in the middle. And a Dilophosaurus, Stegosaurus, and all different types of dinosaurs. And we have Mr. T Rex up there. Oh, he is huge. And look. Got a bunch of eggs to hatch, too. Well, hello, Zeep. How are you? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, too. And I have all these eggs to hatch today. And I'm going to ask the toy commander to help me to hatch them today. That would be cool. Yeah, let's get hatching. Whoop. Sorry, little guy. Okay, Mr. Toy Commander, are you ready to hatch? Let's do it, Zeep. What about you, Mr. Dinosaur? Yep, I'm ready! Alright kids, I gotta get out of here. Well, happy hatching, Mr. Dinosaur and Toy Commander. We'll see you later! Greetings everyone, this is your Toy Commander. And are you guys ready for today's mission? Great, so am I. <laughs> Okay, kids, do you like dinosaurs? Well, I hope so because today we have Dig a Dozen Dino Eggs. That's right, kids, there are 12 different dinosaur models inside with illustrated cards. So today I'm going to be a paleontologist and we are going to break open the egg to find the dino inside and this is a stem product which means science technology engineering and math so we will be learning stuff today too and check out that big t-rex on the cover right there i think it's a t-rex it sure does look like it with those giant teeth and on the bottom of the box it gives you all 12 dinosaurs in color as you can see i have two bowls of warm water one large bowl and one small bowl let's open up our dino eggs okay here we go here is a illustrated card with all the dinosaurs we will be getting today, all 12. Here are the instructions, and we have, what, three different languages here of instructions. All right, and check this out, guys. Here are the 12 eggs right here. Let's see what else is included inside. So we also have 12 of these little tools here for our digging and brushing off the egg. The reason why there are 12 tools because actually this would be a great idea to bring to a birthday party because each kid can do their own paleontology with a dinosaur egg and an excavating tool and they get to keep one of these cards that goes along with every dinosaur and it tells you all about each dinosaur. And we even get these instruction cards, but they are all the same because each egg gets their own separate card. And first we need to soften the egg by placing it in a cup of water for about five minutes. When it sinks, you're ready. Let's unwrap all these eggs. We'll get them in this big bowl of water to sit for five minutes. Okay, so I've managed to take off all the wrappers and each one is labeled with a number one through 12. So why don't we submerge all 12 eggs in here and then we'll let them sit. Oh, it's not big enough. Oh boy, we gotta use this bowl too. All right, let's let them sit and bubble. Five minutes, we'll be right back.
All right, kids, we are back and we have all our eggs right here. They are still a little bit wet and I got my workstation all set up here. I got a little mat down just in case because I know it's going to get messy. I have my cards. Digging out your dinosaur can be messy work. Yes, I know, that's why we have this down. And also, while the egg is softening, spread out some newspaper or paper towels as a workspace. Well, you can also do that, but I have this rubber mat right here. And then on number three, it says, using the flat edge of the chisel, chip away carefully at the egg until you uncover your dinosaur. Rinse it off and then read through the cards to discover which one you got. Let me take out all these information cards here first and we'll get them ready for our dinosaurs when they come out of the eggs. Let's grab our first egg. Let's just start right here with number one. Let's grab our excavating tool and chip away. We only need one, but we do have 12. But that's in case you want to share these with your friends. You give them each one of these and an egg and an information card when they get their dinosaur. So here we go. Oh, I already see something right there. Let's brush it off and see what we get. Whoa, look at this. It's green, I think I know what they call this one. All right, let's wash it off. Okay, kids, here is our dino, and it is called the Parasaurolophus. And it has this really cool little thing at the top of his head. Let's check out some information on the Parasaurolophus. Okay, the Parasaurolophus was one of the big dinosaurs, reaching up to 33 feet long. It was also a herbivore, which means it lived on plants. It was able to run on two legs when it needed to move quickly to reach a high speed. And the most interesting feature of the Parasaurolophus was the big crest on the top of its head. And people who studied dinosaurs often thought that that crest on the top of his head was for making like a trumpeting noise to communicate with other dinosaurs or possibly helping it cool off itself when it got too hot. Okay, on to our second egg right here. Let's get excavating. Okay, let's clean it off and find out which one it is. Okay, so I found out what this one is called, and this one is the Ankylosaurus right here. So let's grab the information card and find out about the Ankylosaurus. So this short, wide dinosaur's body was covered with bony plates like a suit of armor and lived in the western part of North America. Even though it was probably only six or seven feet high, it was almost as wide as it was tall. It could be up to 33 feet long and it was also a plant eater. So it had short legs and a wide mouth and a low head made it very easy for grazing on the ground. It also had a long tail with a bony club at the end, which was probably used to defend itself against the dangerous dinosaurs. Number three. All right, let's clean it off. Okay, I think everybody knows what this one is, right? That's a big one in the back there. That's a pterodactyl. You see that, how big it is? And here is the card. Let's find out about the pterodactyl. The pterodactyl is a type of pterosaur. The pterosaur was the earliest known flying reptile. It means winged lizard, believe it or not. It wasn't actually a dinosaur, although it lived in the same period. There were lots of types of pterosaurs. Some of them were small as a toy plane, but others were as big as fighter jets. Their wings were webs of skin that stretched out from their arms, similar to bats. Egg number four. Oh, this one's super soft. And here we have the Diplodocus. Diplodocus was a four-legged dinosaur which had an extremely long neck and tail. It was around 80 to 100 feet long, was as tall as a three-story building and weighed over 20 tons. It was one of the most easily identifiable dinosaurs with a classic dinosaur shape, long neck and tail and four sturdy legs. It was a plant eater and probably spent a good part of its time in the water where they fed upon water plants 
and escaped its natural enemies, the meat-eating dinosaurs. It had nostrils high in its head, useful for breathing through when it had to submerge itself in water. Okay, let's go on to number five. Okay, kids, so here is the Deinonychus right here. And it looks similar to the one here on the page, but it looks more like right here on the diagram. This long-tailed dinosaur was much smaller than most, growing at about 10 feet in length, and it weighed under 200 pounds. Its name means terrible claw because of the powerful sickle-shaped claws at the end of its long forelimbs. Deinonychus was a meat eater. Its size meant that it could move extremely quickly and it made it an excellent hunter. Its giant eight inch claws ripped up the flesh of the victims, which it quickly chomped down with 60 knife-like teeth. Even more interestingly, it had long, strong legs like a kangaroo. And it appears from the way its bones are shaped, it could balance on one foot and kick hard with the other. All right, Deinonychus. Okay, let's go to egg number six. That's right, that's a half dozen so far. Okay, let's wash it off. Okay guys, here we have the Dilophosaurus. Okay, and on the back it says, we don't know a lot about Dilophosaurus, but we can tell that it was a medium-sized, carnivorous, meat-eating dinosaur with a double crest, like half dinner plates, on its head. That's those little things right there. It had short, small arms with three fingers, but strong legs with four large toes on each, all with claws. It lived in North America. Okay, here we go, egg number seven. Oh, this one came right out so quickly. Whoa, let's clean this one off. Didn't have to do much digging, almost have the whole egg left. All right, kids, and here we have the Iguanodon. The Iguanodon was a large plant-eating dinosaur that lived in Western Europe. Early scientists thought it walked upright on its hind legs. But later, research suggests that in fact it moved on all fours, with its long, stiff tail extended behind it. One of the most distinctive features of the Iguanodon is its spiky thumb, which was probably used to defend itself from predators, but could also have been used to break open fruit and seeds. There's the Iguanodon. Okay, on to number eight. Let's clean it up. Okay, well next we have the Ornithomimus right here. If you look on this chart, it looks just like it, but it looks a little bit different on the card. Maybe the color's different. Ornithomimus, whose name means like a bird, was a tiny dinosaur compared to most of the ones that we know about. It was only about 12 feet long, with long, thin legs and a long, thick neck. While it did not have wings and couldn't fly, there is evidence that suggests that it may have been covered with feathers. It had hollow bones, which meant it was a pretty light and was able to run high speeds, possibly reaching over 40 miles an hour. All right, Ornithomimus, cool. Egg number nine. All right, let's get carving. Okay, let's wash it off, it's red. Okay, kids, and here we have the Carithosaurus. Let's read about the Carithosaurus on the back. This large duck-billed plant-eating dinosaur had a bony crest on its head that was shaped like a Corinthian helmet, like ancient Greek soldiers used to wear, which is how it got its name. Inside the crest, there was a bunch of tubes running from nose to the back of the throat. These tubes might have been used to make sounds like a foghorn. It walked on two legs and used a long, flat tail for balance. It lived in North America and was one of the most well-known types of dinosaur, mainly because so many of its bones have been found and displayed in museums. All right, let's go to egg number 10. We're still waiting for that T-Rex. We haven't found the T-Rex yet. Oh, and that one popped right out too. All right, let's clean it off. Okay, kids, and here we have the Styracosaurus. This plant eater's name means spiked lizard, one of the most unique looking dinosaurs. It was the size of a tank and looked like a horned rhinoceros with a giant flat triangular head with six spikes sticking out of its back. 
They lived in what is today North America and traveled in herds, which gave them added protection as they could fight larger enemies as a group. Fossils shown us that they probably laid eggs in nests and could stay close to them like birds until they hatched. All right, Styracosaurus. Oh no, we have only two more. Let's go right here to number 11. Oh, let's clean it off, it's yellow. Okay guys, our second to last one is the Stegosaurus. And it has all these spikes at the top. This curious creature had large bony point plates sticking right up into the air along the length of its back, which may look to you like they are helpful as protection, but fossils show us that the plates were attached to the skin, not the skeleton, so they would sort of bend if pushed. They were probably a cooling system, extra space on the skin surface, allowing heat to leave the body more quickly. But this bus-sized, slow-moving plant eater wasn't without defenses. It could swing its spiky tail at anything getting too close. It would have some trouble planning its day, though, as it had a brain at the size of a plum. Oh no, they weren't very bright. The Stegosaurus. And there's a look at the front. All right, we have one more, and I think you guys know which one it is. It's probably the meanest dinosaur that I know, or the fiercest one out there. That's right, it is the T-Rex. Oh look, and there's his tail. Let's get him out of there. Let's wash off the T-Rex. Okay kids, we saved the best for last, the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex, also known as T-Rex. All right, one of the largest and most fearsome dinosaurs. It had a mouthful of 60 teeth, each one almost eight inches long. Its massive jaw gave it a bite three times stronger than a lion, and scientists believe that it could eat 500 pounds of meat in one bite. That's more than you can eat in a year. I would say like two or three years. Who eats 500 pounds of meat a year? Whoa! As you can imagine, the Tyrannosaurus was a vicious hunter and feasted on smaller animals. Many fossils show that marks of its teeth and bones have been completely bitten through. It probably had an excellent sense of smell as the skull fossils show a large area for that part of the brain. Once it smelled something to eat, live or dead, it would have no problem scaring away any other scavengers who would try to share. Yeah, you don't wanna mess with the T-Rex. Let's clean up this workspace and see our dinosaurs up close. All right, kids, and here's a look at all the cool dinosaurs we got today. All 12 in the dig a dozen dino eggs. And I hope you guys learned something about dinosaurs today. And don't forget to share this video with your friends, smash that like button, and come back to Planet Sizzle to keep the missions going. This is your Toy Commander signing off, and I will see you on our next mission. It's now time for me to blast off out of here.